Hey guys, um, quick texture tutorial. So first off here, we just start off in GIMP and we just want to throw a texture together, all the different pieces we're going to need for our object, which I have already done. So just save it somewhere on your computer, you'll be able to find it. Then go into Blender, um, go into edit mode for your object, hit A to select all. And uh, you can hit N to minimize that. Um, tap, go up and find the UV image layout and I've already textured this object so I'm just going to quickly do an unwrap to mess it all up so I've got something to start over with um, then uh, once you've got everything hit A to select all go open texture find your texture on the hard drive open it up go down by the um, on the toolbar down there and select um, from solid to texture so you can see um, your texture update as you change it so now we're going to want to start doing some simple unwraps. And um, simple unwraps is just um, lining up your view and hitting project from view. It's the easiest um, way to do, just do an object is to go face by face. You can do several faces at a time if they're all on the same angle. And just um, line it up. Um, use the number pad. Um, the number keys you'll start need, you'll need to get used to um, to um, center your object. You can use one, three, seven, and nine, and then control one, three, and control one, and control three, and control seven. If you select your views, and it'll line them up um, like I'm doing there. And uh, then um, so just select your faces. I believe I hit one, and then it lines it up. And I'm hit U to unwrap and then hit project from view. And then um, on the UV map, move it where you want over your texture. Um, on the UV map, it can be manipulated um, quite the same way as Blender. Um, hit A to select all on the UV map, everything that's displayed um, on the UV map. It will only display what you have selected on your object. So if you only want to manipulate one face at a time for your texture, um, just have that one face selected like I'm doing here um, and then move it around on the map after you've unwrapped it. And um, if you have a couple of faces in the same direction like I just um, selected there, you can unwrap both sets at the same time and save some time. So just uh, moving around. Now there are other options on the um, on the unwrap. You can just unwrap like I did there, I believe, and uh, it will, you know, give you varied results depending on what you have. So in this case, it seemed to work out pretty good. Um, it unwrapped a, a cylinder shape fairly well. There are also other options you could try. Um, hitting U and hit um, once you have those faces selected. Um, hit unwrap, uh, project um, from cylinder. And so you're going to want to have a, a centered view. And then project it from cylinder, which also works quite well. Um, and if, remember, if you have a mirror modifier on and you're texturing, it will mirror the texture on the other faces. Um, so there might be a noticeable line along the mirror where um, the texture doesn't seem to line up. So just do your best to try and um, um, if you want to do a real good job, just try and make, just eyeball it and make sure um, if it's to your liking. So I pretty much for this object just kept it simple and gone with all pretty much project from view um, for all my faces, moved it over to the texture I want and then you know done um, some simple scaling or rotation. Um, when you have uh, your UV um, selected and UV image map, you can use um, the same shortcut keys as you would in Blender when you're modeling. So when you have it selected you can hit R to rotate. Now there's only one difference um, with rotation. It's only going to rotate um, on two levels. There's, it's going to um, rotate uh, actually just around. It's, it's not the same 3D 
same with scaling. It'll only scale on two axes, not all three, because it's 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 on a 2D plane. Same with the rotation. It's only going to rotate one way or the other on a 2D plane. So when you scale, you can um, scale on the X or the Y axis, and I, I don't believe there's a Z axis. Z is the depth, the height, so it's, it's not there on the 2D plane. So what I've done with the rope is because I have such a small texture, I've cut it up in the model so that I can have the faces. It has more faces than it really needs to, but I can have the faces um, tile the texture easier and repeat it. Um, one thing that um, when I texture, um, I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I kind of sit there and get it all day, um, sit there all day and just get it the way I like it. Um, so it's perfect, but you really don't have to do that. All you have to do is get it to a point where if you're putting a rope texture on a rope, as long as it looks like a rope, well, that's what people are going to see it as, a rope. But you are going to want to watch out for details, like when you're texturing wood, if you're doing a plank, you don't want the grain to be wrong so you're going to want to rotate your face so that the length the longest um, part fits the grain you don't want to have a super super wide grain piece of wood because that's just not possible so you're going to want the length to go with the grain and I don't need this many faces on the roof, but what I have done is I set up the roof so that I can project the image on it easier. Um, having the separate faces to that so that I can unwrap them separately and project different images for the planks that hold up the roof. I don't know if I already mentioned it, but another reminder, um, when you're looking for images to use um, for textures, you can just use Google. Go to Google Images and type in what you're looking for, like uh, roof tile, and then type something like seamless, and, uh, or texture, or um, to specify what you're looking for. Um, also, um, there are a lot of great sites out there, um, like cgtextures.com. Um, you just go, um, they have a massive database of really good textures you can use. Um, so you can just go there, you'll have to sign up for a free account. Um, they'll let you download a 15 megabytes a day. And uh, you could sign up for premium if you want to, but I doubt it'll be useful. Alright, so now that you've got your texture on, um, when you render it, it'll show up gray um, without a texture. So what we want to do is we want to add the texture. So we're going to go um, to our properties panel. Um, if you don't have it up, it's just right here. It's in the, it's in the drop down menu, properties. And then go to the tab that says material. And then you're going to hit new and add a new material. Then go over to the checker box, or that's the textures, and select um, image or movie in the first box. And you want to make the UV maps uh, come from UV, not generated. And then hit open, and then find your image so it knows what image to pull from. Now, We'll go back to material because we'll need that in a second. But when we render, it should render with our image pulled from the UVs we just set up with um, the UV image editor. And now we can adjust the lighting if we want. Um, this lighting, I, I suppose, will be fine. I'll just make it a little bit more intense, more brightness. 
There we go. And uh, if you see that shrine, we'll, we'll get back to it later. Um, the shrine on the roof. Um, uh, that's not really desirable on a wooden roof. Um, you know, unless it was wet, but it's not wet. So um, it's sort of gone away because of the angle that the light is at. But um, right now we're just going to go to the object and we're going to go to material. And um, quite near the top, there is going to um, be the speculum. And we're going to want to lower that a lot. You can take it off completely or lower it, but you'll see um, when I render it, you won't probably see the difference, but um, because of the way the light is right now, there, there is a little bit of a difference. But if you look um, in the preview, you can see, you can see the preview for um, the intensity um, to which the uh, the reflection from lighting will be on the object. And so we just want to make that really low, like 0.1. Um, next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pack the blend file. So we go to File, and to go to External Data, and hit Pack Blend File. And what that'll do is it'll make it so that the, um, the, uh, the images or any other um, things associated with the blend file will be saved into the file, so that if we move the file, um, they won't be missing. Um, if we were to move the file without packing it, um, the texture will show up as a pink image from the uh, well. And that's because um, Blender was um, referring to where we had it saved on our computer. But if we, say, upload it to a forum or put it on a different computer, it's not going to, unless we bring that image with it in a folder and tell it where to find it, um, it's, it's not going to be able to find it. So packing, packing um, to the blend file will put the image right into the file so that it can be transported with the file anywhere we take it. And uh, so I've just got to render it. I'm going to do a quick, quick tutorial on how to take a screenshot. So um, when you have your render open, um, just print screen and then put it in the program. To control, control V to paste it into a program, the screen you printed, then you can select the area that you want, hit control C and open up a new paint or what program you're using and hit control V to paste it in and you'll get the selected area and then you can just save it to your desktop or wherever.